Ed I'm going to start again so it's Alison Mead on my keto fitness journey and today I had to sit and watch my husband cook and eat four croissants for his lunch today because that's what he fancied and I was really craving a croissant so I am a member of the Keto Fitness Club and we did in our cooking class a little while ago we made croissants and I did some chocolate croissants with some homemade hazelnut chocolate sauce so I thought I would video the making of the croissants and if you look at Keto Fitness Club in the link that I'm going to post there's a free recipe library where you can download and try these recipes yourself. So basically the dough has, was made first and then it was put in the fridge to cool for an hour and there's a couple of specialty recipes in the dough. It has um, vital wheat gluten in it so this is low carb not really keto and it has psyllium husk in it which might be ingredients that you wouldn't generally get at your local supermarket but I buy mine from Whole Foods Online. So I made up the dough as per the instructions in the recipe, wrapped it in cling film and put it in the fridge for an hour and now what I'm doing with the dough, oh it also has the chunks of butter in there which do like to detach and just squash them back in. It was almost a whole block of butter just cut roughly into centimetre squares and mixed in with the dry ingredients and then milk of choice. I used almond milk uh, in that dough. So now what we are doing with this recipe is rolling out a rectangle, folding in one side, folding in the other side and then ending up with a nice little rectangle here and you can see at the moment we can still see chunks of butter in here but each time I do this and I'm using coconut flour to stop it from sticking. So I'm going to roll this out again and you do this at least seven times. Ooh. So this does take a bit of effort and the chunks of butter do like to detach themselves and stick to the roller. So this is a recipe I've only tried once before um, in the Keto Fitness Club that I am in. We have a Zoom cookery class most Saturdays um, and a lovely lady called Michelle Cooper who's in the group leads those. Just out of coincidence, I knew Michelle um, almost 30 years ago, not quite, but almost, we both worked in Birmingham at a company called Smith & Nephew together, customer care. It's the first job that I had after I married my husband. Oh, that means, must mean it's 26 years ago. And Michelle and I worked in the same customer care department together. When I had my son, and I left the area and I didn't go back to work there after my maternity leave. We did stay in touch a little bit. We met up a couple of times, but I lost touch with most of my Smith and Nephew buddies. And then 18 months ago, through this Keto Fitness Club that we're both a member of, I was a member of the Keto Fitness Club from meeting Mark, the guy that runs it through business networking. And then Michelle turned up at a workshop and realised that she was mutual friends with me, someone she'd worked with years ago, and it's really nice to reconnect again all those years later. So Michelle loves her cooking and loves a challenge. 
So if we think of a food that we used to enjoy before keto, we will give that idea to Michelle and she will then experiment in the kitchen and see if she can come up with a low carb or a keto alternative. And croissants was what we did in class a few weeks ago. So you can look here each time I work it and fold it. It's kind of getting a bit of a marbled effect now. You're less seeing the butter chunks. And I'm just going to keep going and keep going. until it looks so I can't really see the butter anymore. Oh, blimey. It's definitely a little bit tough. But I can see there's no, the butter is mixing in nicely and there's no chunks. When I finish doing this, and when I'm happy with how it looks, just keep going. So the recipe does say to do it seven times. I can't even remember how many times I've done it now. I'm not really counting. I'm going more on how it looks. Um, my husband's just walked in. I don't know what he wants. Oh. But whatever you say, it's being recorded and it's going to be played on YouTube. Hello, Ali. Hello, Paul. You. This is all your fault for eating those blooming croissants today. Here we go. He's just trying to put me off now. But it's not going to work. Right. Just keep going. Just keep going. I'll do this video in two halves because once I have got this dough so that I'm happy with it, what I need to do is wrap it up in cling film and stick it back in the fridge for another hour and then I can show you how we make the croissant shapes. So have ready if you've got it did um, the nice low carb uh, chocolate and hazelnut spread last time when I made them. This makes about 12 I think and I did half of them plain to have with jam and butter and I did half of them with the chocolate spread in them and they were my favourite. So I've still got some chocolate spread in the freezer from when I last made these so I'm going to defrost some of that so I can do some of them chocolatey again or you could just put the chocolate spread on when you cook them to eat them but it was just really nice having the chocolate oozing out the middle so it's like a, a pan au chocolat or a chocolate croissant depending on what you call it this is really giving me a good workout which considering the reason I do keto is because I've got rheumatoid arthritis and it's my at the moment my elbows and shoulders that give me the most jip. This probably isn't the easiest recipe for me to do but I guess it all helps in the long run. Right. Sometimes when it just starts sticking a little bit too much on my rolling pin, I can just scrape off the bits. And when I fold it up, I'll just fold these back up. In the Let's just powder it a bit more, a bit more coconut flour. 
I think I must like almost double the size of it, the amount of coconut flour I put in this as well. It seems to work. Right, I'm just going to reread my instructions to check I'm not missing. Uh, turn the dough, roll into a rectangle again, push down the layers you've just formed, repeat six times. Fold once more, then wrap the dough and place it in the fridge for another hour. So, I can still see a bit of the butter and stuff in here, and I can't really remember what this looked like when I finished rolling it last time. But, I don't want this to get too sticky. There you go. That's a really nice fold in there now. And you can't really see. I can see a few butter lumps, so I think I will do it one more time. There you go. I don't know that you can do this too many times, although it is getting a bit stickier now, so it probably needs a bit more of a chill. But these are going to be beautiful buttery croissants. If you've got other great recipes that you like to do, please do share them in the comments because I'm always looking for new things to try and cook this um, doing this in the middle of another lockdown in the UK and baking and cooking all my foods and doing all these keto recipes is kind of what's and all my friends in the keto fitness club kind of what's kept me sane during all of this. So, folding it over again. There we go. Right, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to wrap it back up in my cling film. I'm going to leave this for an hour. And then I'll be back later with keto croissants part two to show you how you make them nicely into a croissant shape. There we go. See you soon.